Kumusta kaibigan? Ngayong araw, pag-uusapan naman natin ang tungkol sa building materials and construction assemblies. Ano ba ang mga materyales sa paggawa ng isang gusali, bahay o kung ano pa ang sakop ng isang konstruksyon? May mga dapat bang isa alang-alang bago gumawa ng mga proyekto? Pag-uusapan din natin ang mga uri nito at ang epekto nito sa atin at sa ating kapaligiran. Kung gusto mo ang mga usaping ito, well, ito ang video para sa iyo. This is the building materials and assemblies. Let's proceed with the table of contents. Nakalagay dito ang apat na topics na itatakal natin for the whole discussion. And let's start with the first, ang introduction. The basic principles used in construction. Second, the exterior and interior design. Appropriate selection of construction materials. The third one, we have the finishes products and components, and lastly, the environmental impact and reuse of materials. First principle is the materials. Sabi dito, only materials approved by the commission may be used in defining constructions. Additional materials may be added to the compliance manager. And as you can see, Meron tayong table dito wherein nakalagay yung mga materials name, thickness, conductivity, coefficient of temperature adjustment of conductivity, specific heat, density, the R value per inch. Feel free to pause the video, understand and analyze the table. Under the materials, we have the materials name. The material name is used to select the material for a construction. Next is the thickness. Some materials such as 3 coat stucco are defined with a specific thickness. The thickness of other materials such as a soft wood used for framing is selected by the compliance user based on the construction of a building. Next, we have the conductivity. The conductivity of the material is the steady state heat flow per square foot per foot of thickness or per degree Fahrenheit temperature difference. It is used in stimulating the heat flow in the construction. We also have the coefficient for temperature adjustment of conductivity. It is said that the conductivity of insulation materials vary with their temperature according to the coefficient listed. Other materials have a coefficient of zero and their conductivity does not vary with the temperature. Next, we have the specific heat. The specific heat is the amount of heat in British thermal units it takes to raise the temperature of one pound of the material one degree Fahrenheit. We have the density. The density of the material is its weight in pound per cubic foot. And lastly, the R value per inch. The R value is the resistance to heat flow for a 1 inch thick layer. Dumako naman tayo sa ikalawang principle which is ang construction assemblies. Construction assemblies are defined by the compliance user for use in defining the building. For frame constructions, there is a framing layer that has parallel paths for the framing and a cavity between the framing members. The layers that are allowed depend on the surface type. The compliance manager calculates a winter design U factor that is compared to the construction that meets the perspective standard. The U factor is displayed as an aid to the user. The calculations used in the energy simulation are based on each individual layer and framing rather than the U factor. Under construction assemblies, meron naman tayong tinatawag na construction layers 
wherein all assemblies have the cavity pad and a frame pad. As assemblies are completed, the screen displays whether the construction meets the prescriptive requirement for that component. Kumbaga, meron tayong sinusunod na sets of rules kagaya ng standard design, the compliance software assembly sa construction that meets the prescriptive standards for each user-defined construction or assembly. Next is the verification and reporting. All proposed constructions including insulation, frame type, frame size, and exterior finish or exterior condition are listed on the CF1R. Non-standard framing is reported as a special feature. Last under construction layers is the proposed design. The user defines a construction for each surface type include in the proposed design. Any variation in insulation R value, framing size or spacing, interior or exterior sheeting, or interior or exterior finish requires the user to define a different construction. Insulation R values are based on manufacturer-rated properties rounded to the nearest whole R value. Layers such as sheet rock, wood sheeting, stucco, and carpet whose properties are not compliance variables are included as generic layers with standard thickness and properties. Walls separating the house from the attached and conditioned attic or garage are modeled as interior walls with unconditioned space as the adjacent zone, which the compliance manager recognizes as a diminished wall. Floors over a garage are modeled as floor over exterior. The exterior walls, floor, ceiling or roof of the garage are modeled as part of unconditioned garage zone. Exterior Designs Appropriate Selection of Construction Materials Selecting the Right Exterior Materials There are several factors to consider when choosing materials, from the architectural style of your home and neighborhood to the impact that materials may have on your homeowner's insurance rate. Architectural Style the architectural style of your home will narrow down your options for exterior materials based on what is authentic and appropriate to that particular style. Energy Efficiency If you are interested in saving on your energy bill, choose materials with appropriate insulation properties. Selecting the right exterior materials Deed Restrictions Covenants and HOA guidelines. In some locations, your selection of exterior design and materials is dictated by a deed restriction, covenant, or HOA guidelines. Deed restrictions are agreements that restrict the use of a piece of real estate that are contained unsurprisingly and in the property deed. Covenants are legal contracts that spell out what you may and may not do to the exterior of your home. Covenants are typically found in the HOA terms rather than the property deed. HOA guidelines are put into place to preserve a certain level of uniformity within a development or community. Selecting the right exterior material. Local building code. Building codes often restrict materials based on their history of fire resistance or durability against prevailing weather or seismic conditions. Weather and environment. The exterior materials of a home are its first defense against extreme weather events such as ice and snow, driving rain, or high winds. Impact on insurance. Insurance companies may have restrictions on the type of materials used on the roof and exterior to mitigate expensive replacement and repair after damage or to limit the spread of fire. Types of exterior designs Stucco Stucco has been used for centuries and provides a distinct appearance to your home. Many homes with stucco exteriors are designed for modern 
or Mediterranean architectural styles. Traditional stucco is cement-based plaster containing sand and limestone and is applied to a mesh screen, wood, or masonry walls in multiple layers. The outermost coat is the desired final color. Stucco can be painted but adds to the required maintenance of the home. Concrete Fiber Concrete fiber siding is made of concrete mix with wood fiber and designed to mimic real wood. Fiber cement can also be designed to look like stucco or masonry. Hardy creed, hardy plank, and hardy board are brand names for concrete fiber siding. The material provides sustainability by limiting deforestation and is exceptionally waterproof. However, it is not as recyclable as wood is. Wood siding. Wood siding is a beautiful, time-honored exterior materials available in a variety of woods, including pine, fir, spruce, redwood, cedar, and cypress. You can also select an engineered wood, which incorporates real wood, but is more durable, pre-treated against termites and rot, as well as easy and less costly to install. Wood siding creates a timeless, natural appearance. Metal Sliding Trending and popularity, metal siding is a versatile material that can be manufactured to appear like any other siding material. Typically created from steel or aluminum, metal siding comes in a variety of colors, textures, and shapes. Brick. Solid brick imparts a very traditional look to a home. Most solid brick homes have only a single layer of brick over a wood frame. Stone and cast stone. Incorporating stone into the exterior of your home adds significant dimension and texture. For a more organic, natural look, consider using chopped stone. For a cleaner, more modern aesthetic, go with cast stone. Cast stone is a fox stone product developed to look like a stone at a lower cost. It is easier to control the shape and color of a cast stone, which sometimes make it an attractive complement to stone exteriors. Cast stone can last 30 to 50 years. Let's talk about interior designs, the appropriate selection of construction materials. Modern day buildings have truly understood the importance of going green and products are the answer to incorporating reclaimed byproducts to create environment friendly materials which have a unique aesthetic appeal as well. Pag-usapan naman natin ang mga types of interior design. First, we have the coco tiles. Coco tiles are made of coconut shell. The tiles came from intricate basket weave or scallop designs. The backer panel is made of sustainably harvested wood and finished with low POC press. The tiles are easily cut and installed using adhesive and clay. Tiles made from leather scraps. Better was in luxury in Leather has been used for a long time to have new materials for large materials following the richness and glamour of the These are cheaper and these can start. Fabric wall panels. Fabric panels constitute of a panel of wood that is padded with batting and foam, covered over with a fabric. Fabric wall panels have an additional advantage over and above the aesthetics that they provide as they are capable of controlling reflection and reverberation of sound, thereby providing an acoustic solution. Fabric wall panels make a room look warm and cozy. Sumunod ay ang laser cut sheet metal panels. They can be installed in an outdoor setting as a shading device, making them not only functional viable but also aesthetically 
has taken in has the special quality of the space by casting artistic shadows as the natural light moves through the laser cut patterns. Other applications include handrail screens, window screens, and party grills. Next we have the bronze art tiles. We all know that bronze has been used for over hundreds of years to create timeless pieces of art and architecture. Bronze art tiles brings these qualities into a modern home. They are impervious to heat and can withstand any kind of weather. Laminated dressing. Laminated resin is a transparent resin that is formulated to remain water clear even when it is catalyzed. Laminated resin is not prone to yellowing at all and is extremely easy to use, allowing easy flow and fast air bubble release. It is an ideal solution for applications that require a glass exterior. Sumunod, meron naman tayong tinatawag na eco resin. Echo resin is an environment-friendly resin that is formulated to complement carbon, fiberglass, and other laminating materials made out of natural plants and vegetable extract. It is clearly a sustainable substitute for polyester resin. It is almost odorless and can be used safely in almost any working environment. Next, we have the Strand Woven Bamboo Flooring. Hardwoods are vulnerable to weathering and wear and tear. Strand woven bamboo flooring is much more durable than vertical or horizontal bamboo flooring because the cross-hatched strands act in correspondence to keep the individual components of material intact. We also have the cork flooring. It is a green resource that is renewable and can be used without contributing to deforestation. Benefits include aesthetic appeal, good insulation properties, soft texture, tends to repel pest and dust, and installation is very easy. Lastly, we have the resin wicker. Resin wicker is a man-made version of natural wicker that is made out of synthetic material, mostly polyethylene. It is lightweight and easy to move, affordable, comfortable as it does, not have any sharp edges, weather resistant, resistant to pool water and chlorine, and available in wide range of styles and colors. Hello everyone, I will be discussing about finishes and products. Let's start with finishes. Finishes Finishes are used in the final part of the construction or manufacturing process, forming the final surface of an element. They can protect the element they finish from impact, water, frost, corrosion, abrasion, and so on, and they can be decorative. They play an important role in regulating indoor temperature and humidity. Finishing operations are carried out in the right sequence. Care is taken to prevent damage. The method of finishes to be used depends on the type of building project. Why? This is to consider the applicable interior and exterior design. Before selecting a finish, Thought must be given to many factors, such as appearance, durability, maintenance, acoustic criteria, power criteria, relationship to mechanical and electrical services, changeability, cost, and toxic emissions from interior materials. There are two types of finish for buildings, applied finish and self-finish. Applied finish is a finish that is applied on site. While self-finish or inherent finish is a finish that is inherent on the material and does not have to be especially applied on site. The four main building components finishes are floor, wall, ceilings, and roof finishes. Finishing materials Finishing materials are used to improve the service and decorative qualities of buildings and structures, as well as to protect structural members from atmospheric and other effects. 
It is usually designed for interior and or exterior finishing. An arbitrary distinction is made between finishing materials proper and structural finishing materials. Finishing materials proper are used mainly to form decorative and protective coatings, such as varnishes and paints, wallpaper, polymer films, and so on. While structural finishing materials also perform the functions of enclosing members and components of such members. The most important finishing materials are natural stone, glass, paint and varnish, wallpapers, decorative concrete and mortars, wood, plastic, and lastly metals. Natural stone. Natural stone is a traditional finishing material which is durable and has an attractive appearance. Natural stone are used for exterior and interior facings and walls and for floor coverings, mainly in public buildings and structures such as theaters, hotels, and subway stations. Natural stone are also used in the form of decorative chips to finish the surfaces of concrete parts. The most widely used artificial stone finishing materials are ceramics, which are common in residential and public buildings for exterior and interior finishings. Natural stone products are produced from granite, cyanide, gabbro, limestone, marble, and quartzite. Glass. Glass finishing is a wide field, as there are virtually no limits to the imagination. Glass can be finished in many different ways like etching, grinding, laser treatment, firing, coating, printing, and is a bit of individuality. A craftsman technique for glass finishing is glass milling. The disadvantage is that almost all types of glass finishing damage the glass, but at least the surface. Types of glass finishes Frosted glass has a cloudy, foggy appearance. It can be used for conference room walls, exterior windows of an office, decorative signs on the exterior of a building, and glass partitions in a restaurant. Number 2. Satin glass Satin glass is almost the same as frosted glass. The difference is the appearance. It looks smooth and silky. It is less shiny and more matte in appearance. It can be used for partition walls at banks, glass panel doors, fitting rooms, and partitions at car dealerships. Number 3. Reflective glass Reflective glass is plain, clear, or tinted glass that has a metallic coating on one side. It can act like a one-way mirror. It works on both the interior and exterior buildings. It can be used in stores, tall buildings, and small office spaces. Number 4. Tinted Glass Tinted glass comes in a rainbow of hues as well as dark hues. It can increase privacy, filters out sunlight, and minimizes heat gain. It can be used as part of mural, an accent wall, in an office that gets too much sun, and in a store that gets a lot of sunlight. Decorative Concretes and Mortars Given its efficiency, concrete and mortars are used extensively in the factory finishing of structural parts for fully prefabricated establishments. The use of decorative mortar mixtures for the exterior and interior plastering during construction is unlikely unlimited since the operation requires a great amount of time and workforce. Metals Although metals have excellent finishing and decorative characteristics, they are used in modern construction mainly for finishing unique buildings and structures because of their considerable cost. In mass construction, metals are used mainly in the form of small items for finishing the entrances and interiors of the building. Five most common metals. Number one, aluminum. Aluminum has a dull silver finish. It is lighter in weight and more affordable. It does not rust, but it oxidizes, which creates a chalky white residue. 
It is most often used in outdoor furniture. Number 2. Stainless Steel Stainless steel are found in furniture and fixtures throughout the home. It does not rust, oxidize, or corrode. It is low maintenance. It is much stronger than aluminum. Wrought iron Wrought iron refers to the metal that has been hammered or bent in shape. It is corrosion resistant and durable. It is commonly used to make fireplace accessories, outdoor furniture, fat rocks, rustic beds, and more. Number 4. Brass Brass is a mix of copper and zinc alloys. It can be made in various colors such as red, yellow, gold, bronze, and brown. It is typically corrosion resistant and antimicrobial. Number 5. Copper Copper is reddish orange in color. It is found on all types of decor and fixtures. It is corrosion resistant and antimicrobial. 5 Common Types of Metal Finishes Number 1. Antique Antique creates a surface roughness that appears to stand the test of time. Number 2. Brushed Brushed, a matte finish. Looks as if it has been smoothed with a paintbrush. Leaves paintbrush strokes mark. Number 3. Hammered Hammered has many small indents, adding surface texture. Number 4. Polished Polished creates a reflective mirror-like surface, a common stainless steel finish. Number 5. Satin Satin is similar to brush metals, but does not have brush strokes marks. The sheen is between matte and polished. These are some examples of the 5 common types of metal finishes. Wood involves the application of a protective layer to otherwise bare wood. But before a protective coating can be applied, the wood surface must be prepared. Sanding, planning, and scraping can help eliminate surface imperfections by softening and smoothing the wood. Among the wood finishing materials are decorative plywood, veneer, chipboard, fiberboard, and such articles as railings, links, and finish casings. Wood finishing materials are notable for their excellent appearance and service qualities. The service life of wood finishing materials is increased by treating them with wood preservatives and by applying paint and varnish coatings. Wallpapers Wallpapers are thick decorative paper applied to walls with glue. They are widely used for interior finishes. The advantage of using wallpapers is that they are low cost and less labor requirement. Plastics Plastics are a promising type of finishing material. They are characterized by a broad range of colors, a variety of product shapes, excellent sanitary and hygienic qualities, and good corrosion resistance. However, their service life is shorter than ceramics or glass finishing materials. Therefore, they are used infrequently for exterior facings. Paint and Varnish Paint and Varnish finishing materials are intended mainly for painting operations. Synthetic paints and varnishes have become widespread in modern construction. They make possible a substantial reduction in the labor intensiveness of finishing operations and an improvement in the protective and decorative properties of structures. Floor Finishes Floor finishes is the ultimate top layer of all flooring layers. It is the layer that you walk on and it is the decorative layer. There are factors to consider when choosing floor finishes like the type of base, room usage, degree of comfort required, maintenance, cost, appearance, safety, 
an individual preference. A good finishing will have the following characteristics. 1. Look attractive and beautiful. 2. Comfortable and safe. 3. Long-lasting and able to prevent high temperature, fungi, and chemical corrosion. The following are the types and materials used for floor finishes. Wall Finishes Wall finishes is a finish given to walls to enhance the interior and exterior look of a structure. Wall finishes used for the interiors are quite delicate and need maintenance. Wall finishes provide a decorative skin to conceal building components including structural members, insulation, ductwork, pipes, and wires. Factors needed to consider when choosing wall finishes are room usage, degree of comfort required, maintenance, cost, suitability of decoration, and fire protection. Below are the types of wall finishes and the materials used. Ceiling finishes Ceiling finishes provides a decorative skin to conceal building components. Factors to consider when choosing ceiling finishes are type of floor structure, appearance, durability, safety to occupants, the location of mechanical services or equipment, fire resistance, lifespan, economy, function of the building, and the need for acoustic elements. And here are the types of ceiling finishes and the materials used. Roof finishes. Here are the types of roof finishes and the materials used. Products. Building products are prefabricated structures used in construction. These products are processed, finished items that are offered for sale, meaning they are manufactured combinations of materials and perhaps other products, which is then processed to create items such as doors, windows, light fittings, cabinets, and so on. They are also assembled in warehouses so that the project team only needs to fit them in the building. Building products are generally distinguished from materials and from services. Materials are raw, unprocessed substances, such as sand, salt, and so on, while services are activities such as consultation, maintenance, installation, or sometimes the provision of accommodation. The biggest advantage of using building products is that it can make the job of the project team faster and easier, while minimizing waste on the construction site. Components of Building Construction The two major components of buildings are the superstructure and substructure. The superstructure is everything that is above the ground, while well, the substructure is the part of the building that is underneath the ground. And now, let's talk about superstructure. Well, superstructure is the part of the building which is above the ground and which serves the building intended use. Superstructure includes the following. Plinth, walls, columns, beams, seals, lintels and shahas, doors, windows, floors, roofs, steps and stairs. And let's discuss it one by one. First is the plinth. 
plinth is the portion of the wall between the ground level and the ground floor level. It is usually of stone masonry. If the foundation is on piles, a plinth beam is cast as to support wall above floor level. At the top of plinth, a dump proof course is provided. It is usually 75 mm thick plain concrete course. Second is the wall. Walls are the building blocks of bricks or stones. They divide the building space into various support space labs into various beams and rooms. They safely transmit the loads coming on them from beams and slabs to the foundation. They also provide privacy and protection against heat, cold, rain, noise, and dust winds. Third is columns. The columns are vertical members along which beams and slab or roof is supported. The shape of the columns can be square, rectangular, and circular. Any columns that are not put in place properly will collapse once additional weight is put on top of them. Beam Beams are the horizontal elements that withstand all vertical loads. All the weight from those vertical loads are supported at the endpoints of the beams, and that weight is then transferred to the columns or the beam support. Fifth are seals, lintels, and shahas. Seals are the lower portion of window and the ventilator opening. The lintel is the area over any doors and windows, and it is there to support the wall over the larger openings. A lintel bin is normally made from reinforced cement concrete, but it can also be made from concrete and bricks. Chaha is the projection given outside the wall to protect doors and windows from the rain, snow, and heat. In low-cost houses, stone slabs are provided as chahas. Their thickness tapers from 100 to 75 mm and projection is 30, 45, 60, 75, 90 cm. Sixth is door. Doors provide a connecting link between rooms, allowing free movement from room to room. And the types of doors is based on material used and the mechanism and usage. Seventh is window. Windows are provided to get light and ventilation in the building. They are located at a height of 0.75 meter to 0.9 meter from the floor level. And there are types of windows. Eight is floor. Floors are the important component of a building. They give working or useful area for the occupants. The ground floor is prepared by filling brick butts, twist stones, Revel and well compacted with not less than 100 mm sand laid, layered on each top. 9. Is roof. Roofs are the topmost portion which provide top cover to the building. It is located at the upper level surface of a room and it should be big too. Last, the steps and stairs. Steps and stairs are meant to provide access between different levels. Generally, a residential building width of stair is 1 meter and 1.2 m. The stair should be properly located to provide easy access and, fa and fast services to the building. And now, let's move on to substructure. Substructure is the part of the building that is underneath the ground. The purpose of it is to transfer the loads of the superstructure to the soil that is underneath. This is why the substructure is right against the soil that supports it. A 
and their substructure is foundation. Foundation is defined as that part of the structure that transfers the load from the structure constructed in it as well as its weight over a large area of soil in such a way that the amount does not exceed the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and the settlement of the whole structure remains within a tolerable limit. The functions of foundation First, load distribution Second, provide firm and level surface Third, protection against soil movement Fourth, reduction of load intensity Fifth, reduction of differential settlement Sixth, safety against sliding and overturning Seventh, safety against undermining And there are two types of foundation the shallow foundations and the deep foundation and let's begin with shallow foundations shallow foundations often called footings are situated beneath the lowest part of the structure in, gen in general the depth of a shallow foundation is less than its width a footing is the first constructed element of a structure which is built after excavating the ground Shallow foundations are commonly used as they are the most economical foundation systems and relatively easy to construct. Shallow foundations also have its types. The spread or isolated footing, strip foundation, map or rough foundation, and the combined foundation. The spread or isolated footing it is the most widely recognized and most straightforward shallow foundation type, the most economical type. They are typically utilized for shallow establishments to convey and spread concentrated burdens, cost for instance, by pillars or columns, and they are generally used for ordinary buildings, typically up to 5 stories. The spread or isolated footing also have its steps. The single pad footing, step footing for a column, slope footing for a column, wall footing without step, step footing for walls, and the village foundation. The second type of shallow foundation is the strip foundation. This is the type used to distribute loads of structural or non-structural load-bearing walls to the ground in such a way that the load-bearing limit of the soil isn't outperformed. It runs along the direction of the wall. The width of the wall foundation is usually 2 to 3 times the width of the wall. Third type is map or rough foundation. In this type, the whole basement floor slab acts as the foundation. The total load of the structure is spread evenly over the entire area of the structure. This is called rough because, in this case, the building seems like a, like a vessel that floats on a sea of oil. It consists of a reinforced concrete slab or tibium slab placed over the entire area of the structure. The last type of shallow foundation is the combined foundation. This is the foundations which are made common to more than one column. There are different types of combined footing, including slab type, slab and beam type, rectangular, raft raft, and strap beam type. They may be square, T-shaped, or trapezoidal. The main objective is the uniform distribution of loads under the entire area of footing. When this is necessary to coincide with the center of gravity of the footing area with the center of, gra of gravity of the total loads. The second type of foundation is the deep foundation. It is a type which is placed at a greater depth below the ground surface and transfer structural loads to the earth at depth. The depth to width ratio of such a foundation is usually greater than 4 to 5. Type 
types of deep foundation. First is pile foundation, second is pier foundation, and the last is kaizen foundation. The first type of deep foundation is the pile foundation. Pile is a slender member with a small cross-sectional area compared to its length. It is used to transmit foundation loads to a deeper soil or rock strata and the bearing capacity of soil near the surface surface is relatively low. Pile transmits load either by skin friction or bearing. Piles are also used to resist the structure against uplift and provide structures stability against lateral and overturning forces. Pile foundations are used to reduce, to reduce costs and when as per soil condition considerations. It is desirable to transmit loads to soil strata which are beyond the reach of shallow foundation. The types of pile foundation are based on function or use and based on materials and construction method. The second one is the pier foundation. Pier is an underground structure that transmits a more massive load, which cannot be carried by shallow foundations. It is usually shallower than piles. The pier foundation is generally utilized in multi-story structures. It is a cylindrical structural member that transfer heavy load from superstructure to the soil by end bearing. Unlike tiles, it can only transfer load by bearing and not by skin friction. The last type of deep foundation is the Kaizen Foundation. It is a watertight retaining structure used as a bridge to construction of the dock. It is generally used in structures that require foundation beneath a river or similar water bodies. The reason for choosing the Kaizen is that it can be floated to the desired location and then sunk into place. Kaizen foundation is a ready-made hollow cylinder depressed into the soil up to the desired level and then filled with concrete, which ultimately converts to a foundation. It is mostly used as bridge piers. Kaisons are sensitive to construction procedures and lock construction experts. Kaison foundation also have its types. The box kaisons, floating kaisons, pneumatic kaisons, open kaisons, shooting kaisons, and the excavated kaisons. Environmental Impact of Construction Materials Annually, 3 billion metric tons of raw materials are consumed to manufacture building materials and products. The building industry is the second largest consumer of raw materials after the food industry. Obtaining and Processing Materials Obtaining and processing materials can affect the environment in three main ways the extraction, processing, and transportation. Extraction This requires heavy plants which consume energy and produces noise, gas, and exhaust fumes, which leads to climate change. This process also causes a permanent change to the landscape and stone aggregate quarrying. Processing Processing materials like iron ore requires energy-consuming plant, noise and dust, and the creation of waste product like slag. Air pollution leads to greenhouse effect and climate change. Transportation Once processed, the materials will need to be transported to the location which they are to be used, using petrol and creating exhaust fumes which in turn causes climate change.
Timber Timber can be classified as renewable material, especially soft wood. Relatively low energy use in the logging and sewing process with a high transportation cost. Concrete Cement classified as non-renewable, made from limestone, chalk, clay, aggregates, and gypsum. These raw materials must be mined and processed, which requires a huge amount of energy. It is estimated that 8% of a total carbon dioxide was originated from a cement production. Metals Metals are classified as non-renewable. Extraction and processing uses huge amount of energy, causes air pollution, and creates waste products, and changes the landscape. Reuse and Recycle of Construction Materials Construction Waste Recycling is the separation and recycling of recoverable waste materials generated during construction and remodeling. Construction by nature is not an eco-friendly activity. Need for adoption of proper methods of recycling. It reduces the demand on new resources, cuts down the cost and effort of transport and production, use waste which would otherwise be lost to landfill sites. Viable technology on construction waste recycling. When considering a recyclable material, Three major areas need to be taken into account are economy, compatibility with other materials, and material properties. Commonly recovered construction materials Asphalt paving Asphalt is crushed and recycled back into new asphalt. Recycled asphalt paving can be used for paved roads. Land clearing residuals. Trees and brush can be recycled as compost or milk. Soil can be reused as fill and cover. Gypsum wallboard. Remove and recycle gypsum drywall. Markets include new drywall manufacturer, cement manufacturer, and agriculture. Unused drywall can be returned to a supplier, donated, or sold. Wood Reuse timbers, large dimension lumber, plywood, flooring, molding, lumber longer than 6 feet. Clean and treated wood can be recycled, remilled into flooring or chipped or ground to make engineered board or boiler fuel. Demolished buildings. Reuse large portions of existing structures during demolition, renovation, or redevelopment. Extending the life cycle of existing building stock to conserve resources retain cultural resources, reduce waste, and reduce environmental impact of new buildings. Metals Common metals include steel, aluminum, and copper. Metals are melted down and reformed into metal products. Concrete It is crushed the reinforcement bar is removed and the material is cleaned for size. Market outlets for recycled concrete include road base, general fill, pavement aggregate, and drainage media. Bricks Recycle clean bricks by crushing material. Market outlets for recycled bricks include aggregate, drainage media, and general fuel. Roofing or non-asphalt shingles. Reuse 
shipping, terracotta, slate, or untreated cedar tiles and other metal materials can also be recycled. Benefits of reusing and recycling construction materials First, reduces the production of greenhouse gas emissions and other pollutants by reducing the need to extract raw materials and ship new materials from long distances. Second, conserve landfill space reduces the need for new landfills and their associated costs. Third, saves energy and reduces the environmental impact of producing new materials. Fourth, creates employment opportunities and economic activities in recycling industries. And lastly, saves money and cost of materials. Barriers in promoting the use of recycled materials. Lack of appropriately located recycling facilities. Absence of appropriate technology. Lack of awareness and poor source separation practices at job sites. How to get start for it? First, developing market for recycled products. Second, public education, training, and technical assistance. Third, additional policy recommendations. And lastly, promoting reuse and recycling of construction materials. The choice is yours, to landfill or to reuse and recycle. Engineer Banyares and our classmates, thank you for listening, stay safe, and God bless.